Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I have some work coming up into the machine and the parts that I'm gonna be making are signs, so they're really large and they're thin. And that means that I can't clamp them as I normally would in the vise. What I need to do is use some kind of a clamp to bolt them down or uh, fixture them down to a plate. And so what I could do is remove the vise off of my machine and clamp the part to the table or make some spacers or riser to get it off off the table and bolt it to that plate. What I want to do is see if there's a way that I can do this type of work without having to remove the vise off of the table. And so I'm gonna design a fixture plate in this video. The other thing that I see a lot in forum posts, Facebook posts, whatever it might be about Fusion, is people are always wondering, do they need to buy a new computer or why is Fusion so slow? And this video is going to cover large patterns and how you can work more efficiently with those. I should note before I go any farther that the computer that I do the majority of the YouTube videos on, as well as work for customers and training classes, etc., is a 2012 iMac. So it's 10 years old. It's got a quad core Intel Core i5 processor, the mobile version. It has a graphics card in it that is a mobile graphics card with 640 megabytes of onboard video RAM as I believe how much RAM it has. And this computer only has eight gigabytes of RAM. So this is not a powerhouse computer whatsoever. However, over my years of first learning Inventor and then moving on to Fusion, I've learned there are things you can do to make Fusion perform much better. And I'm gonna cover some of those tips and tricks as we go through this video. So what I'm gonna do with this fixture plate is I'm going to design it so that these jaws have dovetails built into them and I'm gonna build, build the same dovetail cut into the fixture plate so that I can simply put the fixture plate over the top, clamp it into the dovetails. When I tighten this uh, fastener, it'll expand out the jaws and create the pressure I need and that will allow me to quickly bolt up the fixture plate. So now that we know how it's gonna work, let's hop over to the file and start drawing it. I don't intend to have this part made in soft jaws. I don't intend to have this be a part of an assembly. This is just going to be a plate, so I'm not going to make a component. And one other note I should also add before I move forward is the size of this plate is gonna be about 18 inches in X and just under 12 inches in Y, which is larger than what my machine can cut. So that means that I'm gonna to have to find somebody to make this plate for me since my machine can't do it. And I think I have somebody in mind, so I'm gonna design this up and send it over and see if I can get them to make it for me. So with that, let's get started. I'm gonna create a new sketch on the top plane, and I'm gonna start out by creating a rectangle, center rectangle based on the origin, and I'm just gonna add in my dimensions. Now I want this to be 11.85, so just slightly under the 12 inch width, width that the material comes in. I'm gonna hit the tab key, and it's gonna be 18 inches in X, and I'll hit enter and I'll finish my sketch, click on the home, and that's gonna be my first sketch. I'm gonna extrude that up 0.75. So I'm gonna make this out of A36 steel, and it's gonna be three quarters of an inch in total thickness. So that's the main shape of this fixture plate. Now I'm gonna put a sketch on the right-hand side, and I'm gonna draw the dovetail for this. So I'm gonna start the line command, and I'm just gonna roughly draw out my dovetail shape, not being too careful. So there's my dovetail shape. I'm gonna add an equal constraint between the two angled sides. And then I'm gonna add a horizontal vertical constraint between the origin. And to find the point that I need, I have to hold down the shift key while I scrub across the line. And as I do, that the midpoint will appear. And that's where I want that to be. I can start adding some dimensions. I know that the angle of this dovetail is going to be 70 degrees, so I can add that. And because I made everything symmetric, the other side automatically updates. If I add another dimension across here, this is going to be three inches in width and everything stays centered again because of the horizontal vertical constraint that I've added. And for some reason, whoever designed this vise made a horrible uh, design mistake and they designed it in millimeters. So I need to add this final dimension in millimeters. So I'm gonna start the dimension command and click on this line and this line. And the total height of the dovetail is going to be three millimeters. Now, I don't know what that converts to two inches and I don't need to. I'm just gonna type in three mm and then I can hit enter and Fusion's gonna do that conversion for me as long as I put the units on there. I can finish my sketch and now I'm going to extrude that particular region. I'm gonna pull the arrow the direction I want to go. And for the extent type, I wanted to go all the way through the part and I can hit okay. So there is my base shape of the parts. Now I gotta start working on adding the holes that I want in this part. I'm gonna start the hole command and I'm gonna click somewhere on the top face of the part. 
and I'm just gonna click the blue dot and drag it until I find the center white dot and I'm gonna drag it right there. Now I'm centered up on the part. I wanna go all the way through. I want this hole to be tapped. So under the whole tap type, I'm gonna choose the tapped option. And then I'm just gonna simply enter in the nominal size I want this to be. I'm gonna make these be half 13. So I'm gonna go find the half inch nominal dimension. And then the thread designation is going to be half 13 all the way through, hit OK, and there's my first hole. Now I did that in the center because I want to do a, re a rectangular pattern, but I want that to go center out both directions. So I'm going to start the rectangular pattern command. I want to pattern features, not faces, so I'm going to select that, which means I could click on the hole on the model or I could click it in the timeline. And then I'm going to choose a direction I want to go. So I'll grab that edge, and then I'm just going to drag my two arrows the way that I want them to be. Now I have some more questions. Currently it's set over how many over what distance. I want it to be how many over what spacing. So I'm gonna change the distance type to be spacing. And then I'm gonna set the distance for each one of my fields to be 1.5 inches. And I'm also going to set both of these to be symmetric as the pattern type, the direction type. So now that I've got that, I can just start incrementing the number of holes that I have. You wanna make sure that this number ends up being an odd number so that you have the equal number on each side of the seed that you're patterning. And I'm gonna do the same the other way. Now, you just noticed that Fusion gave me a warning saying that, holy, you're, you're making a lot of holes here. We don't think that's a very good idea. And so we'll look at an option for that. I'm gonna do what the, what the warning message advises me to do and make this an optimized hole. So I'm gonna make an 11 by seven hole pattern and I'll hit OK, except for first I wanna choose the optimized option, and I'll choose OK, and there's my first hole pattern. Now, if I come over to this other file that I've already created, I'm gonna create a hole based on that point, and for the distance, I'm gonna say all, and I'll choose OK, and let's section this so we can see a little bit better. So I'll do a section analysis based on this work plane, and I'm just gonna slice that in half and then hit OK, and again, do a rectangular pattern. I wanna pattern this hole along this edge, and I'll just pull this up and I do want this to be spacing. So I'll make four of those at the spacing of uh, two inches. And right now it's set to optimized. I'm gonna turn it back to adjust. And when I hit okay, what happens is because I set the first hole to go all the way through, the subsequent holes made in the pattern also go all the way through. If I were to go and edit my pattern type and I chose identical, now when I hit okay, whatever the length of this hole is right here, each of the patterns is the same. And then the last one is the optimize, which is good for large patterns of things. So let's close this out and let's hop back over to the part that we're working on. So that got me one of the whole patterns. Now, I just noticed something I hadn't been thinking about, but looks like my hole goes through my dovetail and I don't want that. I don't want any holes going through that dovetail. So I'm gonna go edit my feature and I'm gonna turn on the suppress option and now little check boxes appear and I can just click on those check boxes and it'll remove those from the pattern. So I need to get rid of all the holes that interfere with that dovetail edge. And I'll just come back and do a different hole and pattern that that doesn't go all the way through. Hit okay. Now it removed those holes from the pattern. I need to add another set of holes. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the top face of this part. And what many people don't understand Fusion just did, it got a little laggy there for a second. And the reason is if I turn off the bodies folder, you see that light blue region. And if I hover my mouse over it, I see all the holes that were also per, uh, that were as part of that face. So there's a default option in Fusion, we'll look at it in a second, that automatically projects all the entities that are on an object face into your sketch, but what it does is it projects them and turns them invisible. So when the bodies are on, you really can't tell that you did that. So what I wanna do, because I don't need most of those projections, is I'm just gonna drag a window around everything and then hit delete on my keyboard. And now all those projections went away and I can choose what I want to project by going to create, project include project, or hitting the letter P on my keyboard. I'm gonna project in one hole as a construction entity and I'm gonna hit okay and now I have that dropped in. I'm gonna turn my construction off and I wanna drop in a point that I'm gonna use for my next set of holes. Now I can add a dimension from the center to the point and that's going to be 0.75 and I'll do the same thing this direction 
and that's going to be 0.75, which is half of my pattern width. It probably would have been smart for me to set up a parameter to do this, to refer to, instead of manually keying in the values. And one thing that I could do for sure is refer to the first dimension. So that if I change one, it changes both of them at the same time. So I've got that placed, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna finish my sketch, and now I'm gonna do another hole based on that point. I want it to go all the way through. It's a half 13, it remembers my last setting, so I'm good. And then I'm going to do another rectangular pattern. I wanna pattern a feature. I'm gonna grab it down there in the timeline. You could grab it on the model as well. I'm gonna grab the edge, and I'm just gonna pull the direction I want to go, and pull the second direction as well. I know I want this to be 1.5 inches again, and I want this one to be 1.5 inches, and now I can just increment the number of holes that I want along that direction and increase the number of holes this way. And you see that Fusion is warning me again that I'm adding a lot of holes for the adjust option. So I'm gonna go back to my optimized. And with that, I have the majority of my pattern. Now, the last pattern that I have to do is where I don't want the holes to go all the way through. So I'm gonna click a sketch, start a sketch and click on this face. And when I do, it projected in again, every one of those holes and I don't need them. So again, what I can do is drag a window around and what you're gonna see is it's gonna take a second just for Fusion to get all those holes selected. And I could hit delete and get rid of those, but I'm gonna do this a different way. I'm gonna choose to finish the sketch and I'm just gonna delete the sketch off. Now, the way that I probably typically work when I'm not doing training classes or working with customers one-on-one -on -one is I go up to my preferences and when this pops up, I'm gonna go to the design tab and I'm gonna uncheck auto project geometry and active sketch plane. And I'll hit apply and okay. And let's do that same thing again. Now when I create a sketch on that face, if I shut off the body, nothing has been projected. So Fusion didn't automatically project anything, which means that I don't have to go back and delete the things that I don't want. And I get around some of that performance hit right off the bat. Now I do need to project in some reference geometry in this case though. So I'm gonna do P for project on my keyboard and I'm gonna grab this hole and this hole. I'll project those in as construction and I'll hit okay. And now I'm gonna drop in a point again. I don't want this one to be construction, although it probably doesn't matter either way. And now I can add a dimension from here to here as being 0.75, so you can see where that parameter, if I would have created it, would have been helpful. And then I'm gonna use a horizontal vertical constraint to line the point up right there. So I've got that point set where I want it, and now I'll do another hole going through here. It's gonna remember all my settings. I'm gonna set this to be a depth of 0.4375. It's half 13 and I'll hit okay. And now we see that that hole doesn't go through. So it's that hole right there that we're looking at and it doesn't go through into the dovetail, but I could still screw a stud in, into the top into there. So now I'm gonna do a pattern. I wanna do a feature. I'm gonna grab that right there and I'm gonna do a direction of this edge. I'm gonna pull the direction I wanna go. I want the spacing to be 1.5 and then I'll just add the number that I need, which should be 11 if I remember right. Yep, there we go, and I'll hit okay. And that fills in that original row that I deleted off. And now to finish that us up, I can do a create and mirror. I wanna mirror features, and I'll just go to the timeline again and click on my pattern in my original hole. My mirror plane is going to be my origin plane, and I'll hit okay. And I'm sort of glad that that happened. You can see that didn't work out. It should have worked out, but it didn't work out. If I click on this, it just says that the mirror compute failed. So you may run into this every now and then. I know the Fusion team is working on this as a project to make it better. Let's do that mirror over again. So I'm going to choose to create and mirror. I'm going to mirror features. Again, I'm going to choose the pattern in the hole, grab my mirror plane, and this time I'm going to use the optimized option, which is probably the least likely option that I would think would work, but oftentimes it's the one I have the best luck with in this situation. I'll hit okay. And there we see it, those set of holes come across. So that is the fixture plate design that I wanna have. I'm gonna save this file. I'll just call this Sile X7 fixture plate. I'm gonna save it into my directory. And now I can take this file and send it off to the uh, people that I think will be willing to make this part for me. Now, I just noticed there was two things I haven't done to this file yet, so let's do that. 
I want to add a hole at the center so that I can reach my Allen wrench through and tighten the fastener underneath. And then I also want to see what this thing weighs. So I'm going to start the hole command and I'm just going to click somewhere on the face of this part. And it remembers the last hole that I used. I know I want this to go all the way through, but in this case, I don't want it to be a tapped hole. I'm just gonna do a simple hole. And that simple hole diameter is going to be 0.75 inches. To make it a little easier to line up, I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm just gonna drag this to the origin. So even though there's already a hole there, I can put a hole over a hole, that'll be okay. And I'll hit okay. And now that gives me enough clearance that I can put my Allen wrench through that hole and tighten the fastener underneath it. The last thing I might want to do is go to modify and physical parameters. And I'm going to assign a material to this. So I'm going to go down to metal and it's quite a lot of metal choices. I want to get into the steels and I want to look for a 36 steel. So let's see if we can find the a 36 steel. There it is, and I'll just drag that onto the body. And now that's going to be made of A36 steel, which means I can go to my my bodies, right click on it, and get the properties. And now when we pull that up, it tells me that that weighs 619 ounces. I hope sooner or later the Fusion team will switch this to pounds instead of ounces. But if I take 619.295, and divide that by 16 it tells me this fixture plate is roughly 38.7 pounds so not a light little plate let's jump forward in time and let's go out to the machine after this has been received back from the people that are going to make it for me and go take a look at it out on the vise all right so i got the finished fixture plate from one of my customers that has a machine shop looks pretty good here you can see it sitting on the machine and if I come down to the side, maybe we can see how it fits. So you can see, if I can get to focus, that there is the dovetail jaws. I don't have it tightened down right now. So if I come up here and put my Allen wrench in here and tighten this up, I can feel that it just caught the dovetail. And if we come down here and take a look, there we can see that the dovetails have grabbed the dovetail on the fixture plate and everything is securely held in place. If I try to move this thing, it feels really nice and solid. So this should help me out with a lot of the type of jobs like the sign job that I have coming up so that I don't have to take the vise off the table uh, just to put some kind of plate on there to bolt my parts down to. So I think this is going to be a really handy option. Again, thanks for sticking with me in the video this long. If you have any questions about this whole process, please leave me a comment or shoot me an email to kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com. As always, thanks for watching.